The stars at night, if you were unaware, are big and bright deep in the heart of Texas. But what's bigger, brighter, and deeper than the Celestial Showcase is the prospects that come out of the Lone Star State. My man Shooter Hunt got an up-close look at the next crop on the campus of Texas A&M, and that sets the stage for this edition of Coffee and Curveballs. That is the aforementioned Shooter Hunt, and I'm Corey McCartney. Shooter, the 2027s and 2028s were on display, and are for an event that has been popping since 2022, what was the biggest takeaway? Uh, there are some absolute dudes. I, I, was, I was telling Brandon Goins, who did such a good job for us in Texas, there was so much depth. I always kind of judge how good the event is, like if I feel overwhelmed, right? If I'm trying to get tweets out, there's too much going on, I, I'm behind on all this. That just means there's a ton of good players. And for two days, that's all I felt. I'm just behind. There's too many good guys here. What, what, what are we going to do? So I, it was awesome. I mean, Texas AM, what a great host. That stadium's incredible, and they're only going to make it better. They have plans to build it because everything's bigger in Texas. They're making it even bigger. So um, it, it was an awesome weekend. You have your Impact 20 article up on prepbaseball.com. I want to hone in on the nine to know. A list that starts off with a pair of 2027 middle infielders, Lubin Racone, who has that combo of 94 eggs of Velo, a 6860, and Selvin Garrett, whose hit tool seemed to make quite the impression. Oh, without a doubt. Lubin Racone, the dude, top 100 guy uh, for our national ranking. So there's a little surprise uh, <laughs> take before they come out, um, but can really hit. Bat the ball's there. He's 6'2, 6'3, 170, ultra athletic, projectable. On the, on the dirt can really slow things down. So does the same thing in the box. The bat, the ball's there. Um, drove a ball to the, the wall for, I think it was a double there, but he had multiple hits on the week. Um, the ball finds the right spot in the glove. Uh, he's an absolute dude. And then Selvin Garrett in the box, there was just ultra polished, mature approach from BP into the game where I think he had three or four hits in gameplay, which is not easy to do in a showcase setting. And then some of the guys who were helping out who had, coached against him throughout the summer just like this guy just raked every time we saw him um so it's one of those things where you find guys hitters who hit hitters hit you find the guys who can do it selvin garrett is off to a great start laying a foundation and that buddha johnson school i mean they had some really good guys at this game at this event yeah including the first arm on your list uh reed deersky is his high school teammate some crazy spin from the right side 2700 on the slider as part of that four picks miss what did you make of this 27 yeah, another guy where, especially during the fall, I always find that velocities are down, right? They came off a big summer, the school, the throwing programs are a little bit different. What are we looking for? Athletes who move really well on the bump with the quick arms. You can find our track man data, which is ultra helpful to find um, the advanced metrics of it, whether it's induced vertical break, uh, the spin race, the axis, the, the release heights, all the great things that track man's able to, to tell us. Well, Dursky's stuff is really good. And the eyes... Um, the track was able to quantify what the eyes were telling me and saying like, this guy can absolute pitch. Um, it looks like a short stop in the mound. It's a polished delivery comes out of the hand. Well, and another guy who looks the part um, confidence wise on the bump uh, in that expectation of success. Um, I, I'm really excited about what Reed Dursky and again, Buddha Johnson, there must've been six or seven guys there. Um, it, it, they're going to be really good for a long time. The next few years. A pair of short stops as we head down the list and Grant Stafford and Max Bachman, two players who have repped Texas in the past as members of the 2023 junior feature games team. What sets these two in a part where a position in a position where, you know, you're getting a top tier athlete in an estate where big talent has come from the position. Well, I, I think for Stafford, it's a guy who's, it's a high floor guy. He's already there. He knows how to play baseball, high IQ. He takes a real mature round of batting practice and spray the ball to all field with some impact direct path. Um, and then looks the part of shortstop as well. And there's kind of like when you have a, a crew of a hundred like this, all these kids are really good. We could have, this list could have gone easily a hundred deep and any college coach needs to look at every player that was at this because they were all dudes. Um, but a guy like Grant Stafford, you can tell like the other kids know this guy's really good and, and they've kind of seen him before. That's something that as a scout, you're always looking for, like, where do the kids think? Where, where, who do they think is the best guy out here? Grant Stafford kind of has that it factor hmm. again, expect success, wants to go on the field and prove it at all times, has a real mature, polished approach, loved what he was about. Bachman has the six three six four frame. Um, it's going to be impact power from the right side. But what I was really impressed by him was even though he's big and you're only a sophomore, there's some awkwardness to most kids when they're going through these growth spurts. He was ultra athletic and confident in his movement patterns and could stick at shortstop for right now because he finds the right spot in the glove and soft hands, gets rid of the ball, and he looked the part just running around the bases as well. So I was really excited about what he's got to bring to the field because he's got some unteachableness with regards to his frame. Hmm. So with a bad speed approaching 80, a 6.67 in the 60, and an exit, 
at Velo uh, in the mid nineties. Hudson Leonard is a metrics machine. Add in, it's all from the left side. This Sunnydale 2027 is looking like a must follow. I, I mean, we talk about that unteachableness. He is packing the stat lines with ease. He kind of looked like it. Speaking of Texas A&M, Caden Sorrell, who's there, is going to mm. be a sophomore this year. Will be a huge impact guy after last year having a great freshman campaign. Very similar. Could lift the ball in BP. He was sending balls, nice lofted balls out of the park there at Texas A&M. Um, but square shoulders can move around the diamond. We'll see if he's that has the ability to go to center field right now. Kind of corner profile because of what that bat profile is as. Um, but power hit he hits it hard he runs fast not overthinking this heading the next summer he'll have lots of guys follow let's hide behind the plate uh Willens christians charlie hurd eighth at the position in texas is another member of that 2023 junior feature games roster has pop time down to 187 sounds like you see power potential there as well i mean this guy had an absolute bazooka and he's got good bloodlines his dad was a first rounder but he was just absolutely thrown down to second with ease. And I, I talk about so much, just having that moxie and that confidence. And there's a certain swagger, the way you carry yourself on the diamond, that expectation of success. It's hard to build that. So guys who have that innately um, and just Charlie Hurd just made those awesome jumps. And I like the, the direction that he's headed in can really defend behind the dish. It's a big physical frame, but moves really well, soft handed um, and can really drive the ball to the backside gap from the right side, uh, but I think there's going to be even more power coming, and I'm excited to see about see what the spring brings and then even more so into next summer. Next up, we dive into the 2028s, two ways uh, with Mount Pleasant's Daxton Price, Liberty Christian's Matthew Heredia. Prep Baseball has yet to unveil its first 2028 rankings. What did you like from these two who each appear to have legit two-way capabilities? Dudes were not scared. Uh, there was nothing fake about these two guys. They hopped on the field. Daxton Price just was an absolute mega dude, <laughs> kind of – for only being 5'9"-ish, left handy, he's probably 150 soaking wet right now. He really was much bigger in the box, um, was driving the balls. And another guy who just – it was hit after hit. Like, he just expected that to happen at all times. Also hopped on the bump. I think he was up to 84, 85, but spun the breaking ball 2,800-plus. Um, mm -hmm. So he's just a gamer who's going out there right now to compete. And that, that's what I loved about him. You, you just couldn't leave not understanding this 28 is a guy that we have to follow. It's probably going to be an impact player for some program in the future, which is way far away right now. And then Heredia, another guy who just – it was hit after hit. I'm pretty sure he was fighting for the cycle at one point. I don't know if it was a triple or a yeah. double he was looking for. Uh, but multiple hits, another guy who hops in the mound, quick arm, looks like a shortstop on the, on the bump. Two guys who are – obviously still far away from just being finished products, but they have laid a great foundation. They're good athletes and guys that coaches are going to circle and add to their list in the upcoming years to follow. Shooter, I close with this, which is maybe the most important question. What was the best thing you ate during your time in college station? Oh, I went to Dixie chicken, which apparently is a staple there. So I feel like I've been immersed into the Texas A&M culture right now. It was delicious burger fries. Um, Shout out to Rhett the Jet for taking me to a great place. What are we giving it out of 10? Uh, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. 10 out of 10 atmosphere would go back. All right. He is the well-traveled shooter hunt, and we'll be back soon for another Coffee and Curveballs. Until then, we'll see you at the Diamond.